Ooh, good morning. It is time to do things. <clears throat> Not quite sure how, but there were a bunch of projects that wound up hitting kind of at the same time. Yeah, strangely, in the beginning of the new year, so it's uncommon. But I am keeping busy trying to keep up with international supply issues. <clears throat> been playing chess lately which is kind of interesting because I was never good at it I was like you know I should actually try to learn a bit about that <laughs> and it's uh it's very interesting yeah I'm a gamer chess chess the game chess is so great but then they make chess too You play as John Chess, the main character on the board. I haven't, I have been amazed at how much my heart rate gets going just playing chess. <clears throat> it's not quite to PUBG levels, but it's definitely more than uh, other more <laughs> allegedly exciting games. <laughs> I had read a while back that uh, two grandmasters sitting in chairs across a table from each other, sorry, across a board from each other, um, burned as much calories as a marathon runner. And I was like, oh, is this, is this because your brain's doing all kinds of stuff? Your brain is doing all the working overtime, consuming calories? No, it's a, uh, which is kind of, kind of makes sense. I think the brain doesn't really consume a lot of calories. I think it's more impulses and stuff like that. Uh, maybe electrolytes, uh, ions, I guess. It's not really, it doesn't matter. It's polar. Um, but it's really just about heart rate. It's about stress. And it's basically a prolonged period of high stress. And uh, as one uh, chess man, uh, Henry Chess, uh, Grandmaster reported that he, over a, a week of tournaments, lost like 23 pounds or something like that. As just like pure stress, <laughs> heart rate, uh, <clears throat> extreme mental focus, and adrenaline probably. I don't know. That's interesting. I wonder, because uh, adrenaline would be related to you get the, like shakes afterwards. That'd be interesting to look into. Do <laughs> chess players get the shakes afterwards? It's not quite fight or flight, but it is. It is like high stress. <clears throat> it's like everyone stops to look at you because you said something, and you're like, I'm pretty sure that was the right thing to say, and I think they wanted to hear it, maybe, or I said it completely wrong. <clears throat> so it's interesting um, I thought chess was like a, a pure IQ thing it's it's kind of not, I don't think. It, it's definitely a, a large factor. Uh, but there's also just... Uh, chess... I, I did not realize this, but chess is uh, mostly about experiences. And uh, remembering patterns. Learning patterns and remembering patterns. Which plays heavily into IQ, but if you don't have those patterns in your, in your brain, then uh, they don't help you. <laughs> Even just patterns for getting a successful checkmate. Because you can, uh, 
<clears throat> you can stalemate by, or you can draw by giving your opponent zero places, zero legal moves. And if you do that, then you, you essentially lose. You, you, were, you were winning and then you put yourself in a bad position or you allowed your opponent to set up a position where he gets a draw instead of a loss and you get a draw instead of a win. Which was uh, kind of funny to see the computer do to me a few times. Although, computer, see, that's the thing. Like, I don't think... It's a very interesting relationship that chess has with the computer. So I don't think chess and other people uh, seem to agree. Uh, chess is not meant to be played against computers. The computer is like an aid to... Uh, an aid to the chess player to say, hey, by the way, you know, if, if you're building structure, and you're like, hey, if you do this, that's going to be real bad in about 18 moves. <laughs> <clears throat> or it's a 90% bad outcome in 18 moves. Okay, well, I can't really see that far ahead, so thank you, computer. Uh, you know, you can explore forward to see what the bad things are, and then go, okay, I kind of get an idea of what's going on here. And all of this kind of hinged on, you know, me losing my light squared bishop here, or me moving my, me pinning in my light squared bishop. Uh, and you have to they're not, well, I'm just starting out anyway, so, <laughs> it, it's, for me, it's mostly fundamentals, like, build good structure, and don't mess up your opening, and that's like, you don't even get to play chess if you don't, if you have bad openings, if you don't know how to open, then you, you lose almost immediately, you don't have any structure, you don't get to play chess, you don't get to give and take and move and, and strategize, because the game's just over. You're just running around like a chicken with your head cut off. <clears throat> the one thing that really is cool about chess is at any point, at any point during the day, I can push a button on here and engage someone at my level in a game of chess that uh, is not to exceed 20 minutes. It's usually like 15 minutes or something like that. <clears throat> And, uh, practically, basically, uh, a figuratively infinite amount of uh, opponents at your fingertips. <clears throat> and all you gotta do is push the button. So it's, it's interesting, and the more I learn about it, the more interesting it becomes. I am trying not to fall into this trap of, like, uh, chess as, like, a spectator sport. <laughs> because, like, oh, I'm gonna, you know, now my, my, my YouTube feed is full of, full of chess openings and stuff like that, so I'm trying to, <clears throat> I'm trying to kind of moderate things, but, um, the idea that there's just like, uh, goodness, brain is all the way to the brain today, brain, brain maximum. <sighs> what was I talking? Oh yeah, I, I started up this expecting to talk about functional programming and now... <laughs> Now I'm over here, so <clears throat> I was meandering back to functional programming, and then I couldn't figure out how I got from from there to where I was to back here again. So I don't know. <clears throat> functional programming is pretty cool. I am starting to get a a, a greater, a better understanding of. Um, oh right, sorry. The, at this point, chess is just for me. It's just doing openings seeing a couple moves ahead and knowing what to look for the uh the checks the pins and uh understanding how you build structure and how the opponent builds structure affects what pieces are in play what pieces are important and what pieces are worth sacrificing in order to break things open and to get in and it's very very interesting
oh right chess chess spectator spectator sport because you can uh like chess can be a game that you play or it can be like a hobby or um like uh, a sport that you watch really actually yes because you could sit there and watch games and, and watch game plans and be like oh yeah that's cool oh wow cool oh that's so great oh that's so creative it's uh, once you uh, have an ability to, you have sufficient understanding to appreciate the game, then you can watch lots of stuff and appreciate what's going on on the screen and appreciate the creativity and the expressivity that is uh, provided through the, through the through the language of chess, <laughs> because it very much is, <laughs> there very much is a, a language that's being spoken that's very interesting. Um, but if you don't play chess, like, what are you, what are you doing? Like, like you're not really applying this. It, it's just like, you're, you're just watching sports. You've got a little pennant that says, go sports, go chess. <laughs> I mean, what better way to appreciate the game than to play it? And uh, unlike uh, pro level football, you can just play at any point against someone who is your level instantly <laughs> that's awesome it's really cool I guess theory is kind of what I'm, I'm thinking of like I'm not even to a point where I can learn the theory um, I've definitely gotten out of my depth <laughs> on some of these things uh, even I was listening to a, a functional programming thing at, uh, at Google I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm keeping up here. And then I, <laughs> the dude lost me at like the 16 minute part, 16 minute mark. I'm like, ah, uh, this is, this is over my head. Uh, I'm going to have to come back to this later on. Goodbye. <laughs> uh, the, the, the thesis that is, uh, seems to be being built or that I'm building, uh, which is kind of the only thing that makes sense, I guess. I, I don't know. The current thesis is uh, object orientation and uh, abandoning functionality was something that just kind of happened by accident. And that's... It's a pretty disappointing thing about the, uh, about the tech industry. And uh, there's probably other industries where it's just like the best thing didn't necessarily win. The best thing... You know, there, there wasn't like a straight up, uh, even evenly matched competition between languages and styles and paradigms. It was just like this works pretty good. Uh, let's let's keep using it. I don't like new things. <laughs> okay, but here's why this is better. <laughs> that is brilliant. But I like this. It is, it is disappointing. However, uh, I do believe that the, the functional programming style is at this point where we've got, uh, first of all, gigahertz coming out of our ears. We've got enough processing power to operate at a higher level of abstraction uh, to the point that we don't have to do things like the lower level memory management. <clears throat> that stuff, all of that. Uh, along with the fact that functional programming reduces the mutable code and reduces the bugs. So as your code base gets bigger, it is scalable. As you need to double, triple, or quintuple, or septuple performance, it scales up. That does not happen in object-oriented, memory-managed, or I could call it micromanaged, because it's essentially what you're doing. You're taking all these things that need to be managed, and instead of saying, hey, computer, you know all this uh, uh, mumbling tedium you've got here? Uh, why don't you go ahead and take care of that for me? We say, no, 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 I will manage. I will manage the memory. I will take care of it. We will need more. I will allocate more. But don't allocate more than we need. So there's resource management when we've got uh, you know, gigahertz and uh, gigabytes coming out of our ears all over the place uh, almost infinitely what did I say not practically figuratively infinitely scalable upward to to a point where you've just got a knob on the AWS that says well more power crank 
oh, I just turned up uh, 60 new servers to process during this peak time, and now I'm going to crank, turn it down. And I've spun down those servers, no worries. <laughs> or set up a, a balancing and management so that it does it on its own. Yeah. <laughs> AWS server management it just, it just turns on its own servers and then turns them off when it's done with them. <clears throat> so it's just, it's, it is, well, I've said it for a while, it's not sustainable. It's not scalable and it cannot keep working the way that it's working. Uh, one interesting argument I heard about the, uh, the functionality point argument thing is that because functional programming and functional style uh, and the, the other higher order languages are not the norm, then it's hard to find programmers to replace them, to replace other programmers. Also, because the language is more expressive, uh, there is more requirement for uh, understanding in the management of employees, uh, which is to say it's it makes programmers cheaper. Um, and easier to replace, which as a corporation is, it, it is literally a legal requirement. <laughs> so, so just keep that in mind. You're required by law essentially to manage risk while you're operating the corporation. And if one dude uh, is running <clears throat> the whole system on a series of per Perl scripts that look like uh, cuneiform tablets, and he's the only one that can read him because it's it's a super it can be super expressive, and in style and in uh, well in style and and run flow essentially, yeah too expressive. Um, like that that is actually a liability. It 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 literally is because no one else can walk in and say oh I, I get this I grok you know I can pick this up. So we make it object oriented and say, well, now people can pick it up and it probably takes about the same amount of time. <laughs> but still, the, the the OO programmers are more available than the, the functional programmers. So it's, it's still it's still backwards. It doesn't make a lot of sense. You, you set up expressive Haskell code and it, it reads like a sentence. And you just like you, you, you just read it. You read it like a book. <laughs> At least Lisp uh, goes like infix. It like reads from the inside out. So there's there's like that mental hurdle. Haskell's just straight. That's weird. <laughs>